Hello all, this is an introductory part of bearing capacity of shallow foundations. A foundation is a part of a structure which transmits the weight of the structure to the ground. A foundation is therefore a connecting link between the structure and the ground which supports it. A foundation is required for distributing the loads for the superstructure on a larger area. The foundation should be designed to perform satisfactorily such that the settlement is within the safe limit and the soil below the structure does not fail in shear. The settlement and the shear is the two characteristics. When I see this diagram, if the footings are designed for sandy soils, the footing for the portion of the house over silty soils may be undersized this could lead the differential settlements the choice of a particular type of foundation depends on the magnitude of the load the nature of the subsoil strata the nature of the superstructure and its specific requirements if i want to define the bearing capacity i can say as it is a power of a foundation soil to hold the force from the superstructure without undergoing shear failure or excessive settlement. In simple words, it is the ability of the soil to support a load applied by an engineering structure. A soil with insufficient bearing capacity might fail by shear, allowing the structure to sink and shift. Generally, the dense and well graded soil with angular particles has good bearing capacity. If the foundation failure is by settlement, as we are aware of how symptoms are observed with respect to various settlement types. But in case of shear failure, sudden failure is predicted, so we need to focus on simple shear failure mechanism when a horizontal strip footing resting on the soil surface is subjected to a gradual increasing the load shearing zones are observed this shearing zones possesses an action of the soil movement and creates failure surface where load intensity equal to ultimate bearing capacity q u we can see the shearing zones. Shearing zone 1 is firstly created and later zone 2 and zone 3 respectively. Need to understand what is this zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. As per the Tursky, three zones do exist as per his assumptions too. Zone 1 known as active zone just below the foundation. The soil in the elastic case and behaves as if it is a part of the foundation itself. Zone 2, known as transition zone, between the active and passive zone. At this stage of the foundation, load effect on the active zone and neighboring soil performed the region which is called as arch of logarithmic spiral zone. Coming for zone 3, called as passive zone, formed near the ground surface just beside the foundation so called passive zone because zone 2 pushes the soil towards the fill in general sense active zone below the footing creates action of on the surroundings familiarly said as triangular wedge spiral zone pushes the soil laterally and upward direction also called as radial shear Passive zone, self weight of the soil tries to restrict the movement of the soil from the radial shear. This passive zone also called as Rankine's passive zone. Now before going to the core content, we, need, we have to understand the basic terminologies. The first is the gross pressure intensity. The gross pressure intensity considers as the structural load sulfate of the foundation and plus the overburden pressure of the soil. The load coming from the structure plus 
the self weight of the footing plus the surcharge load imposed on this the surcharge load is known as the overburden now when we excavate the soil the same pressure the weight of the soil is known as the surcharge load known as overburden pressure this all three comes in the gross pressure intensity what do you mean by net pressure intensity the net pressure intensity is we are reducing the overburden pressure okay gross minus the overburden pressure is neglected what do you mean by this overburden pressure how do we calculate the overburden pressure is calculated as unit weight of the soil into the depth okay we will be saying saying it as df depth of the footing gamma into df we will be getting overburden pressure known as surcharge load now get to know about what do you mean by this gross pressure and net pressure where do we use this why we differentiate this values the gross pressure values are used in design to find out the area of the footings nextly the net pressure intensity we are using this value in design to find out the shear strength of the soils and and the bending moment of plane footings okay the next one will be moving to what do you mean by this ultimate bearing capacity you people have noticed here it is qu the gross ultimate gross pressure was designated with the prefix as q now this gross pressure is just here it is known as q now we are adding here u q u is known as ultimate bearing capacity we have to understand this ultimate bearing capacity is related to the gross itself now ultimate bearing bearing capacity is the gross pressure at a base of the foundation at which the soil fails in shear the next one is the net ultimate the gross ultimate bearing capacity qu minus the surcharge load nothing but geostatic stresses we are reducing this is known as net this value whatever we are getting we are using to find out the shear strength and to calculate the bearing to calculate the bending moment of the plane footing the next one is the gross safe what do you mean by this gross safe we are giving the prefix as q yes safe in the net mean but it is yes it is a maximum pressure at which the it carries the safe without the shear failure this is known as gross safe net safe bearing capacity q n s where it is a net soil pressure which carries the safely without the risk of the failure we are giving it as qs minus the surcharge load we are reducing the most important we are using this in the all the designs known as the allowable bearing pressure how much to be allowed it is the net bearing pressure at which the soil neither fail in shear nor the excessive settlement happens settlement and the shear okay we are not going with it before to it what is the pressure induced at what level we need to find it out allowable that is known as our allowable bearing pressure now all, all allowable bearing pressure is also known as allowable soil pressure itself okay now this value is used in the design of the foundations now the most important is how do you find out the safe bearing capacities okay for all the bearing capacity we need to find out the safe itself the factor of safety we will be considering it as 2 to 3 depends on the government it is state government or central government we are taking with respect to that now the first really we have to calculate the ultimate bearing capacity qu after once we get this qu okay we need to find out net ultimate bearing capacity the qu minus the surcharge load is reduced overburden stresses okay once we get q n u we need to find out just we are implementing this q n u in 
QS, QNS is equals to net safe bearing capacity divided by factor of safety. Once we get this QNS, then we are implementing a QS safe bearing capacity is equals to QNS plus surcharge overburden stresses. Okay, then we will be getting safe bearing capacity. The objective is achieved. Okay, this please do remember. Okay, now with this session, we people have understood about the intro part of the bearing capacity of shallow foundations. With the next session, we will be moving to the mode of the shear failures in this shallow foundations and the bearing capacity theories in the shallow foundations. Okay, see you. Bye. Thank you.